my old friend Rob, Rob Stenzinger. Hi. How are you doing, Jersey? I'm doing okay. I was just getting ready to do a little bit of drawing, and I thought it'd be fun if we did a little bit of hanging out together while I was drawing. Um, and you were playing a game. I see it on the screen. I see it at the bottom of the screen, right below you. Awesome. You have a really nice setup here. Thanks for inviting me to uh, to stream with you here, Jersey. It's um, Yeah, I'm, I'm playing a game that I made, and it's called Word Turtle Island. It is a nature dungeon action shooter where you rescue books and readers who are in danger from some foes who are attacking the most awesome library in the galaxy. <laughs> the most awesome library in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a place where, think of like, it's they you know they have these these the species of this being the word turtles who can travel the universe and collect all the best you know anything art and books and whatnot and they bring it all to one place they they team up with this other uh, interesting type of beings the living books of power right so they the turtles and the books collaborate to uh, to run this place uh, except things have gone pretty pretty wrong because there's there's these three three uh, malicious beings that have uh, essentially tried to take all the power for themselves. Um, the, the special abilities of the, the living books of power, all the books, everything, and all the readers who just got caught up in the mess um, that uh, this, and this is where this game starts, right? You're, you're the last word turtle here to try to take it all back. If you can, you're teaming up with uh, the only free, an available book of power named Portia, the book of portals. And uh, you get recruited by Portia to try to, you know, make, make things right. Is this game available now? It will be available incredibly soon. Right now it is awaiting approval in the queue, both at Google play and on steam. Awesome. And we, you can sign up for early access there, right? Yeah, and so that that's the plan. It's it's the the core of the game is done, but like a lot of folks who who are um, in small companies or solo, you know, independent game developers, um, you know, it's it's a it's nice to get your product out there and and meet the audience sooner, and uh, they get to play it, and you get some support from that exchange and make the game uh, into its full version, right? But uh, yeah, I've got, uh, you can, the, the whole game is playable start to finish. Um, and it's, you've got this chill mode where you're in the book sanctuary that Portia set up to um, help books and readers just get where they need to go. Um, it happens to help you out too. You as a turtle will level up and you'll get more word weapons and more actual like um, powers that give you all kinds of abilities both in this chill peace situation and in battle and that's where you actually find the books and readers in danger um and little by little you will collect porsche's sort of colleagues the other living books of power and uh once you get enough of them you'll you'll unlock the final battle with those three creatures who have um tried to take over everything awesome it looks really good, Rob. And this is this. It's an important thing to note that you made this entirely on your own. Like you developed an entire game by yourself. Yeah, it is. Uh, um, how do I? I don't even know how to, to phrase it well. I guess this is great practice, right? It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I developed it by myself, right? It's kind of like, um, you know, you you make comics by yourself, right? I mean, it's like all kinds of creative endeavors. You can create big teams that that make stuff happen too you you know dividing up the big work into smaller work and stuff right mm -hmm. but then um this this happens to be something that i did um solo but i've had a lot of support of of like well my supportive family and, and friends so like i've had this sort of quiet community that's seen me make this for the last two and a half years and giving me feedback um but then in between that and a few public events um, you know, that's how I guided this ship and figured out, um, you know, when would it be ready enough? And, 
be something fun that that folks uh, would I don't know feel good to to jump aboard and and play. So that's uh, I yeah it's taken a while, but um, like it, there's other things too. Like I've um, the the tools I use I didn't make that I didn't you know like I use Godot and I have used you know different things to make the music with different versions that I put together. So like things like um, uh, Loopy Pro and Reason and Figure being, you know, music apps, um, tons of different things that I didn't have to build that, um, and then lots of encouragement, support, testing, feedback. So it didn't, it's not as lonely as, as it saying I developed it by myself, right? Well, yeah, I know. And I, I actually push back on the whole word lonely when it comes to this kind of thing, because I, th I feel like, th is it loneliness or solitude, right? It, it can mm. be solitude too. So I, I just meant that like you, you bore the, 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 the brunt of the load of making this thing. And while some may want to frame that up with like, wow, that's so much work you did yourself. It's like, well, that's also, that's like, like a lot of time I got to be in this sort of imaginal problem solving space, which is also super fun. Mm. It is fun. Like, like, uh, it's full of all kinds of problems that that I, I had fun, you know, figuring out and choosing which things I wanted to put in my way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, making art, making music, making a story. I mean, it took a while to figure out what what how does this world make sense to me, and and um, and figuring out like, well, why did I make a game about rescuing books and readers and stuff mm -hmm. like that? Um, yeah. But it's. Uh, going on that path and it, you know, it took, it took what it took and it's still, uh, you know, ongoing, right. I'll be making more updates to this. Um, of course, um, I would, I look forward to, you know, getting to that full version and then trying to reach more platforms, but, uh, but steam and Google, Google play are friendly places where I'm going to grow this. So for whoever that works out for, that's, uh, you know, that's where you can jump on. That is super cool. Um, and also, yeah, we got to dig into why you want to make a game where you fight with words uh, mm. and, and why saving books feels like an important idea for you to do in a, in a, uh, a fantasy setting. Oh, <laughs> um, well, I mean, yeah, fair, fair points. Uh, it's, um, it's it started as as just coming from a place where I I honestly um, I wanted to make an action game, but I didn't want it to be all, like only glorifying violence. You know, I love violent action games, and <laughs> but yet when I was sitting down to make one by myself, I'm like, you know, what 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 am I, what's in my heart right now? What do I care a lot about? And, and I've had, I mean, in, during the course of our friendship Jersey, like I've had all kinds of interesting opportunity to be connecting with libraries and, and, you know, presenting and tabling and all of that stuff and, and getting a deeper and deeper, you know, affection for, for all the entire community around libraries. Right. Mm. And so I was like, well, what if, what if this game involved the conflict that was like protecting a library? I'm like, yeah, I would love to protect a library. And then just kind of grew from there, you know, thinking about, um, and then, uh, then in the course of the, this two and a half years, you know, suddenly we're in the midst of a lot of book banning and a lot of different, you know, people of, of different backgrounds needing and wanting to be represented and other folks wanting to not include them. Right. So books, you know, books about being, you know, in, in any part of the LGBTQ plus community and, um, you know, books b about, you know, different experiences of having different kinds of hair and different uh, skin color and different culture being excluded, right? And so, I mean, after a while, I was like, wait a minute, like, like, yeah, I want to protect the books. I want to protect the readers too. And so it just, it made sense to like put this into this fantasy world. Uh, it was a, it was a good fit. Mm -hmm. Um, and earlier, early on when I've, I've, I've had this at a, I've had it at like three public events really so far. And, um, 
and when I start sharing that, like, oh yeah, it, 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 people are stop by and they look and they have a curious ex expression or tilt of their head, like, oh, what's this game? And I'm like, yeah, it's it's a it's actually a, a game all about protecting the books and readers who are in danger for, for. And if any of those words come out of my mouth when people are looking at it with the curious head tilt, um, I saw many folks all of a sudden have raised eyebrows, like, hey, wait a minute. I would like to jump into a video game and protect them as well. And I'm like, I think we're on the same page. <laughs> and and so it's been fun to to explore the the both instinct instinct side of why and then unpack it and 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 um share that. Mm. I mean, I think you have a pretty pretty deep why for the project you're working on as sure. well right very, very similarly i mean it's like it's like i love action adventure stories and i love like wild satisfying physical conflict but when it came down to like making my own stories about that it's like i felt a lot of cognitive dissonance around the idea of like well the villain will be dealt with by being thrown into a pit and never seen again you know mm. <laughs> and and also i like is conflict always hero and villain? Can there be conflict in other ways? So yeah, mm. the, the, the book, I'm do, doing some development work for my next Dr. Bear book. And it's, yeah, it's very much about like, for me answering the, the question of, can you do something with like really satisfying action that doesn't make violence a celebrated activity? So Satisfying action that doesn't make violence celebrated. That's interesting. Yeah. So like you're really you're, you're painting yourself a, a challenging project, <laughs> aren't you? Well, if if you buy into certain broad cultural assumptions, <laughs> so but if you if you think about it, spend a little time with it, you realize oh, that actually, you know, like we just assume an awful lot when it comes to action adventure storytelling. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. so like I'm actually working in Clip Studio Paint right now, and this is development for the next book. But the interesting thing about it that that the artists watching might want to look at is that I actually hired a um, blender artist to create the entire town where my next story is going to take place. So like, like 40 or 50 buildings on this landscape on this little like uh, coastal village kind of thing. Um, and you can take blender models obj or yeah obj files or stl files I, no not stl yeah i think you can it doesn't matter probably you could you could export out of blender to a format that clip studio can read as a 3d model and you can turn the model around get it the way you want it and then i'm just going to draw over top of this so it's going to make my life as i was thinking about um the next book after having finished the first book i'm like what new efficiencies can i find not to make this thing cheap but to make it so that it asks for less of my time, I can produce as as high quality work as possible it, as quickly as possible. Um, and so I can focus more on like the, the really challenging stuff, like how do you do satisfying action and adventure where you're not glamorizing violence? It's all intertwined. Yeah. Like the kind of, you know, like putting your message into a thing that is a big package of problems that you want to solve to be able to say the thing you want to say. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think some of what you described, it can be the language of, um, well, you know, it sounds, it sounds like it, it's, it's, that sounds like optimizing words, you know, right. That sounds go. like big, that sounds like stuff that why, why does a, an individual artist care about that? And I think, there's a ton of reasons, right? Like repetitive stress on your your body, and you know, mm. um, like the just f wanting to feel connected to the project in a way that's exciting to you, because you're like, whatever technologies or medium or the constraints that you pick. I mean, they're they're they're, you know, um, it's it's okay to include that, right? as uh as it matters and so i am going to make it with uh 3d technology or whatever mm -hmm. um being the case you, you know if it if it lets you put out more books in a year or two maybe that's maybe that's also a good thing um right well this goes back to when you were talking about like using uh lots of different kinds of pre-existing technologies to mm. uh help optimize the production of your video game which 
like I had this conversation with my students and with the uh, fellow teachers uh, at, at one of the residencies where it's like, well, you don't make your own paints when you're painting. I mean, some people do, but generally speaking, you just go buy some watercolors. They're already mm. made for you, right? So it's like they're it's like where are you gonna draw that line? Like if you wanna say you did something by yourself, right? And where you wanna draw the line if you wanna start talking about whether or not something is cheating. Oh. So yeah, it, cheating or whatnot. That was I had an interesting experience with that um in publishing Word Turtle Island is that um there's uh there's so many different ways to make music that when I was filling out the form for um Steam. Right, mm. and that uh, I was like trying to decide f when it comes to music, did I really did I use any tools that could be classified as artificial intelligence? Right. Oh. And I thought, you know what? It's great, given the kinds of you know tools I used using BandLab uh, dot com and and uh, you know it's which is like a digital audio workstation that can run in your browser and on all kinds of platforms. It's pretty awesome. Mm. But they've got shortcut tools and stuff, and I'm like, well, I'm not sure, so I'm just going to go ahead and redo the music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I know which side I, of this conversation I would like to be on and which side I don't want to be on. So, mm. uh, so yeah. So I, there's, there's certain shortcuts that I did not take for this, but... Um, but yeah, there's so much reuse of art and things to try to, to make the big problem into smaller doable problems um, that, that I think we're, that, that you just end up facing anytime you try to make anything. Like you, mm. you're describing, like picking your paints and all that stuff. And um, you, you could have... Well, oh, and uh, gosh, making your own paper, making your own, like you can go as far as you want to go. Yeah. Um, but it's optional. And, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I did, oh gosh. I did not want to build my own game engine. <laughs> I just wanted <laughs> to make a game. Um, yeah. Anyway. So it's, yeah. And I just, I really empathize so with your description of, of getting set up with a, I mean, what's cool is you were able to arrange a, a, a nice collaboration and um, set yourself up for ongoing, um, you know, making your project happen when and you're actually, with your 3D town. Here's, here's where working with human artists, not, not to get on an AI tear, but like the, 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 the cool unexpected thing that emerged out of working with, a human blender artist to, to develop a model of the town I wanted is that he had lots of questions for me about like, okay, well, what's, what's the economy of this town? How many people live in this town? What's the weather like? What, what's the general uh, vibe you want to go for? And he, it, as he asked more questions, I realized how little I had thought through what I wanted from this thing. So he actually helped my story get more, richer and more thoughtful because I had to think about some backstory of the town that I normally don't think about very hard, right? I normally just like kind of make it up as I go. And I, 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 Rob has been the unfortunate recipient of some of my haughty opinions around world building and like how sometimes I think it's, it's really overdone and you, you can just wing it not to be disrespectful to it, but you can, you can wing it in a respectful way. But, um, mm. but this, I, I, I mean, I could, I couldn't have this guy, do a good job unless I answered the things he needed to know, which meant I had to think about it a little bit harder than I normally do. So that was, that was excellent. It, it was, it was very, um, mutually beneficial in that way. It's yeah. So you, let's see, that is one of the strengths. I, I look forward to doing a little bit of collaboration on, on this project or my next game, or I imagine, so I'll be working on this for another, at least another year. I bet, I bet. So, I don't know when, when that would be, but, um, but just hearing that, you know, having another thoughtful person dig into what can be, um, a useful, uh, a, a useful dive, but not, not a pointless dive into a yeah. thoughtful exploration. Like that's, that sounds, I, I'm envious of that. That's, that's pretty cool. It's, uh, and I should think about that for, you know, as I expand this game. 
Mm. Like what, what would be a, a nice collaboration to do? Yeah. Like in terms of more material for the game or like other products surrounding the game or actually like hiring somebody to make things that you would use within the game? Hmm. I, well, definitely side collaborations sound nice. And, uh, but, but, you know, I don't know, potentially, you know, an expansion or something or getting uh, ideas for new characters or could be making posters or I don't know. I'm just, I hadn't thought a lot about the collaborate, but you're, you're reminding me that I, that I, I, it's, that sounds pretty desirable, right? Mm. Not that I have an exact problem to solve yet with it. Gotcha. But yes, but you, you've been doing this long enough that you can anticipate that there will probably be instances where having a collaborator on some aspect of game development or products surrounding the game will be desirable. Yeah, for sure. Cause it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just, a, it's a, it's a good thing getting, getting other creative caring minds, uh, involved in a thing. So, um, what, uh, trying to think back to our, our chat so far because we definitely presented thoughts about what I'm currently working on and uh, you're you're developing something f um, like a follow-up book right right for so, that's coming out uh, the for a book that's 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 coming out pretty darn soon right yep September of this year uh, hmm. the inscrutable dr. bear and the case of the two-faced statue will be in stores everywhere you can pre-order it on Amazon or bookfinder or target or uh, Barnes and Noble everywhere you can get books you're gonna be able to get this hmm. um, and uh, yes it is the story of the it's a fantasy, spooky fantasy story about the guy who heroes take their dangerous treasures to for safe storage. And the problem is if you have a house full of gorgon heads and, and monkeys paws and things like that, every evil wizard in the world is going to want in your house. And one gets in and all of the cursed objects get out and he goes off in quest to find them and only to find out that the cursed objects weren't at all what he thought they were. Um... So that that's the first book. I'm in development of a second story, and I'm being careful to say story instead of book because I don't know what form this thing's going to take yet. I'm letting mm. I'm letting my intuition guide me on that, and also I'm letting the reaction to the first book tell me <laughs> what the second story will be. Because if the book comes out and everybody says wah wah, no thank you, this is actually not that great. I'll say, well, no, that's impossible, but okay. <laughs> well, you're, oh, you're going to get some signal, but the, I, there's no way on this earth that you're going to get that signal. But well, cool, cool. Okay. But like, it. or the, the financial equivalent of that. How about that? How about it's like, oh, no, <laughs> nobody okay. knows about it. No, you know, I, I, I see friends who I spend, uh, you know, at least a couple weeks a year hanging out with, and they say, what? You did a book? Right? That could happen. Um, uh, but anyway, I'm letting the outcome of the first book determine what form the second book or second story will take. Um, but I'm going to make a story. I'm going to make a comic, but what, how that comic is shared with the world TBD. Gotcha. Um, okay. But, um, but yeah, one thing I like to do a lot, and I did this for the first Dr. Bear book, is I like to spend a good amount of time doing like development drawings, like sort of like, okay, the, the outline and synopsis is written. The first round of thumbnails are done. I've started my second round of thumbnails, but before I start doing any final art, I'm gonna start drawing some of the scenes and settings of this book just to get a feel for it and see how it, like trying it on in front of the mirror in the store mm. and see if that changes anything when I get to doing the final art of the book. Um, also, it lets me sort of like tune myself to concert pitch in terms of like being ready to draw it. Well, and I mean, there's some amount of development that's incredibly nurturing, like sets you up to succeed, right? You take the big problem, divide it up into enough of a smaller problem that 
you know, you didn't, because of course we're we're avoiding saying the word the the word Cimmerillion, right? But we're kind of saying it without saying it, um, <laughs> um, which is admirable. And uh-huh. to the extent that it's so admirable, it's attempting to to thing to to want and sound like that's perhaps the most correct way to go do go about a big imaginative project. But it's but super if, impressive to read, right? Like it, it's yeah. it's. It's a substantial body of work that is very thoughtfully put together. But yes, that was one guy's way of doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Which, there, the, yeah, there's plenty of other options. Uh, a whole, yeah, a universe of possibilities for approaching a story that. Um, uh, so, so you're de- you're doing some development, right? So, for how much how much of that development is enough? Like, sounds like solving the problem of all the the what the town looks like is is largely figured pretty out. helpful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yes. um, and then yeah, there's another element of like just drawing a few of the different locations and just I I guess like how much is enough? Like when I'm not interested in doing it anymore. Um, but I, I feel like that's something that like, I'm a lot more practiced at knowing for sure, because I think I wouldn't have said that 10 years ago because I wouldn't be convinced that I wasn't procrastinating. Oh, um, right. Like, cause this could easily become pro- procrastination. Well, I gotta do like, like 25 more development drawings before I really dive into the final production of the book. No, at some point you gotta say go. So, right. But, um, and I think like, I'm a little bit more in touch with what that feeling is now after doing this a bunch of times, but, um, and then like the desire to just start seeing progress on the book or the story, I should say. Okay. It's not a, it's not a book. It's a story. The pull of the big, the big problem, the, yes, the thing you the thing you showed up for. Right. Oh, gosh. There are so many tangents that are so tempting. <laughs> Why? What I just uh, with um, it's just, you know, you, you pick a different interesting problems to solve about the big problem, right? Yeah. Um, like uh, I at, at a certain point I had like um, so every book you find in this game, right, has its own title, its own description. But I actually currently am not really showing off the descriptions, right? And it's kind of a this own like I came up with a generative approach for it. So um, you know, there's like over ten thousand words in the game, and they can get mixed in in fun, interesting ways, right? And uh, and so I noticed that I I didn't laugh as much when I when I read a book title. So mm. a few months back, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna have to go make up a bunch of new book title patterns." <laughs> <laughs> and and um, you know, it just I could I could get lost in that for a while. Yeah, yeah. That I I don't know. I mean, like, there's a part of that element that I also like. I get pretty bored pretty quickly with. Um, I think a difference here is that most of what drives me in making these stories is living with the characters. And that's why I think that's one of the reasons I got like such kind of like a, a chip on my shoulder regarding like excessive world building. So I'm like, just make me love somebody, make mm. me love somebody in your story as quick as you can. Uh, I, it's not important to me that you've got like these awesome walking cars like that, that that's a, that's a neat little bit of extra spice, but it's not what I come for. And it's the same with making the stories. Like I just want to sit down and like spend some time listening to these people talk to each other. And so I like doing the make them ups world building stuff. That that's great, but it's only interesting to a point because like eventually I want to sit down and just listen to pickles talk. Hmm. Um, there's a part in this next story where someone says to her, uh, like a, a villain character says to her, oh, so you want to be friends, do you? And she thrusts her arm up in the air and screams, I'll never give up on friendship. And I want to draw that scene so bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
right? Ugh. Like stuff like that is what makes me want to do this stuff. So I think that's a that's a little bit of a difference there. And like that's where I can let my boredom become a barometer because I have a, a very different reason. Well, I have a, a very clear primary reason for doing this. The fantasy stuff is super fun, but it, it's only in service to letting me spend time with really interesting people in my imaginal spaces, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, that is, let's see. It just, you, you make it, it, there's a lot to what you just said. It sounds almost, you know, too, like the ingredients of that, it sounds like they're, they're, they're simple, but I don't, like how in the world, like, did you get to that point where you could distill it to that, where it's like, right. oh, I want to make books because I want to, you know, have, be, a, I really admire the works of this other artist, or I want to, you know, I want to play guitar because I love this, mm -hmm. how it makes me feel when I hear that, or, you know, mm -hmm. and then getting to the point where you know that you have something to say, that's, I don't know, that's, that's, that's a life's journey, right? Like, that's like something I never would have had the language for when I was like 17. Mm. When I was 17, I just wanted to draw Spider-Man looking awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm not making fun <laughs> of that kid. He, he, he had a sense of taste and sense of purpose. He just didn't have the language yet because he hasn't gone through the journey. Like the same reason that I think it's, it should be illegal to ask a 16-year-old, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Like they don't have the context yet. Right. Like, yeah, let's find ways to welcome people into the world at, different, at any different stage and let, let, let them continue to develop and grow. Um, so yeah, two middle-aged nourish, nurturing artists talking <laughs> with you, <laughs> right? <laughs> wait, wait, my phone's ringing. Oh my gosh. It's HBO max. They want to hire us to do a show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Called two middle-aged nurturing artists. Can you ASMR just a bit more often and then, uh, <laughs> you're going to have to have someone stop by and get, get to get a big blast of encouragement once in a while. <laughs> Fine. I'll do that show. Sure. That's my favorite anime. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I know what's wrong there with is. my monk here. Here we go. Sorry. I was, yeah, I, was the, I need to peek over at the Instagram here and see what's what. Oh, that's right. You, yeah, in the in the the video capture, you can't see what I'm doing. And I'm penciling oh, I my know. monk. Is that so? Wait, oh, that's a monk. Cool. Yes, there is a because it looks a little. Look, it looks like an underdrawing of like pickles or something. Well, yeah, he's a he's he's a pig, but he's a woolly pig. Oh. Um, and uh, cool. He works at an abbey which was formerly a church and that's all oh. I'll say for now. But he's, he's, he's our client in this story. He's the person that Dr. Bear is trying to assist with. Speaking of wizardry, your character design is so uh, it's, it's beautiful. And it, it and it's like the, the written pitch or the, the verbal concept that that you've shared in private about your book is fantastic and exciting but now combining that with the, that incredibly cute pig <laughs> uh, that's uh that's some powerful stuff yeah i was going for what i was trying to accomplish with him was uh donald pleasance um from <laughs> from halloween uh de mm -hmm. detective loomis like the sort of wild-eyed you know He's evil kind of guy. Like not that the monk is evil, but like he's seen evil and he's he's he's, he's someone you would hear that from. It's plausible. Like Right. Right. That's what this I'm uh This cute fuzzy elder is uh frazzled. Yeah. But and I better pay attention to what they have to say. If I ignore it, eh, something might right. happen to me. Right. He's he's <laughs> he's looked into the abyss and it looked back as it goes or whatever. But yep. um Yeah, so <laughs> but I love it. going back to a conversation you and I had a long time ago on the Lena Tart cast was um, I feel like the first book which comes out in September drbear.com B-A-E-R um, was my Thundercats so now I can do my Silverhawks where I can get like super weird 
Right. <laughs> well, I mean, we've been trying to figure out a lot of things about our own path in, as artists and, um, you know, learning from experience of others around us and stuff. Right. So mm -hmm. like that, that is, it, it was surprising to me when you said that th the same team made, made those things, this, uh, those, those, they're they're very different feeling, but they they have some similar, you know, maybe joyful spirit in there. But like, mm -hmm. yeah, Silverhawks is is uh, is delightfully weird, uh, <laughs> and uh, and also like in so wanting to you know produce you know make the different kinds of art and how do you how do you make a make a go of it and and so like for me like figuring out. I've, I've had, you know, corporate gigs where I've had the, you know, opportunity to help, you know, design and make products and, and different kinds of business tests. Right. Mm -hmm. And having that mindset of like, well, you know, I'm, I'm coming up with a hypothesis to, you know, make something work well on a variety of levels from, for different stakeholders. So how could I, and, and I, I, so I came into this, the, into making word turtle island uh, with this it's like how could i create something that is truly from my heart but is all, but has also the um it can it can meet its people that will trade with me for it right and and then can i um can i figure this out where it's something i can actually build also like that whole combo is mm. is um you know, was oh, was a big it, part of it. Are we back to your? Is it feasible? Is it desirable? Is it uh, viable? Oh, yeah, viable. Yeah, you know, which I didn't come up with that, but like I have my own lived experience working with that. Um, wow, that's fun. I just uh, once in a while, like I've curated this dictionary a lot, but once in a while I get surprised. Um, so that's a little, 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 so whoever was watching the screen when that word showed up, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to leave it there. It wasn't, it was just, is it, is it, is a PG word? You know what I mean? But like, oh, okay. Okay. Someone could throw it in chat if, if they're into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how long we've been going. I feel like we've been going for about, about a half hour or so possibly. Oh yeah. More. Um, and I know we both have other things that we got to get to. So right, right. pretty soon, but, um, Hey, Sally, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by the stream. It's really cool that, that folks hung out with us. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially since we like didn't announce it or anything, just turned it on. Mm -hmm. But we, you know, we're motivated. We have a, a um, we, it's the odd timing how that works out that we each have our own individual projects that are, um, you know, coming into the world um, right about now that, that both took, you know, huge, you know, amounts of effort and, and all that for, for each of us individually. Um, and we happened to have made a show together for like 10 years. <laughs> so it was, it was, I, I appreciate you inviting me out here to, uh, yeah, well, sort of it, it's, it, I mean, chat and share. Yeah. We, we've, we've made a lot of, uh, video things together over the years and it's nice to get to do it again, even in an impromptu way. Hey, Ronan, good to see you. Ronan's another, another student. Awesome. And the very talented young artist. And I'm returning to Ronan school next year, hopefully. And we're actually going to be doing uh, some work in Blender. I'm going to take my experiences of doing this stuff for my book to uh, help the kids level up at making their own Blender models to import into drawing apps. And oh, That is one of my favorite things. I love that you do that. And it's probably where I got inspired to do it too. But it, where it's like you, you go on adventures creating stuff and there's things that you carry with you that are, that were, were really helpful that might, mm. might help others too. So that's, uh, that will be a pretty awesome resource 
for folks to take part. Yeah. Yeah. I was excited that the teacher was excited about it. Like when I, when I suggested like, well, Hey, here's some free stuff we can use that will provide alternate approaches to creating images. Um, and she was on board. So yeah, I'm, I'm stoked on that. It's I'm also just stoked on like just expanding my lesson plan playbook, but, and getting the chance to work with the kids again, that's not nothing. So, um, but yes, we do, we do have to go, but, uh, you know, uh, we should let people know in case they don't follow you, Rob, where, where can they watch this whole video after the fact if they want to? Um, well, I'll probably share it here on, on Instagram and on TikTok. I am, uh, Rob Stenzinger, um, and pretty much every social place I, I I've been a part of, you can find me as Rob Stenzinger and it's, uh, yeah, Instagram and TikTok probably are the best options right now. Okay. And then the game, I'm going to write it on my screen so people can go there. Mm. It's word turtle island mm -hmm. and that yep that'll that's like a shortcut the, you'll get to the landing page but you can also search for word turtle island in uh steam or in um google play so very soon it will be absolutely purchasable <laughs> and uh but you can wish list it right now on steam awesome i'm so happy for you rob what an amazing thing. What an amazing journey to go through. I can't wait to hear all of your microcasts and reflections about it. Mm. Thank you, Jersey. I appreciate you being here for it. All of it. That's right. I, I, I did get, I got a lot of behind the scenes <laughs> view of, of watching that game come together. It's very uh, encouraging yeah. for how much you've heard about it. And you're, you, you're saying, go, go say more about it. And, and <laughs> I think, <laughs> Well, that's really sweet of you a lot of interesting growth happened through that project um, yeah for sure and i will be yeah i'm gonna i'll be sharing more i prioritized heavily getting this product to that place that met my criteria for the, the hypothesis of it's got to be feasible viable and desirable and that was um you know that's what i worked to get it to and so that's why i didn't go into early access until now after two and a half years of development. Oh man. All right. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out with us. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do this again real soon. Cause we got, we got, we got to, we got to talk about the stuff that we made. So, all right, everybody. Excellent. See you later. See you later.